The microenvironment is a very complex environment and uh, um, we kind of uh, decided to invest in studying notch for several reasons. First of all, it is expressed in most cells. All CLL cells have notch on the cell surface. So in a very heterogeneous disease, it's sometimes good to have something that stays there. And uh, the second reason is that, of course, notch is frequently mutated, actually about 10-12% of all CLL patients at diagnosis uh, have notch one mutations. So we decided we wanted to invest in that and we uh, understood that the mutation itself alters the amount of active notch one that is present within the nucleus of the CLL cells. And, and that has a profound impact on transcriptional mechanisms so that it alters nuclear balances and there are some genes that are transcribed more effectively than others. One of those genes is called DAS22 and it's an oncosuppressor. And so we know that when NOTCH1 is mutated and it stays more in the nucleus, then that gene is shut down uh, by methylation of the promoter, uh, which is caused by uh, histone deacetylase binding to methyltransferases. In any case, the oncosuppressor is lost and that has an effect on the cascade that leads to MAP kinases activation, that rephosphorylation, CCR7 expression, and ultimately response to uh, chemokines. And it, by using immunocompromised mouse models, we could show that uh, cells that carry NOSH1 mutations have def uh, have, are, um, are facilitated in reaching the privileged niches, the lymphoid tissues, for example, the spleen. Those mice have very big spleens because those cells could move along uh, far more easily. And the second issue that we're working on now concerns the interplay between notch signaling and the BSA receptor signaling. And that is important because the BSA receptor is the driving force in the disease. And we have some preliminary data suggesting that mutations in notch one could prime uh, B cells to respond through the BCR.